corner we're going to take a look at a, uh, this is a drive shaft for a 37 Bugatti. So, um, just get your head around that. It's 86 years old and uh, it's being altered to put an overdrive in it. So, we'll talk about the overdrive and then we'll look at the construction of the drive shaft and what we, what I went through to just get it to the point where it's at. So, the output of the overdrive that they're putting on there had a round flange with a, a 2 inch 530 uh, female pilot and a uh, rectangular bolt circle. It was 2 inches 20 thousandths in one direction and 2 inches 400 thousandths in, in the other direction. So it was a rectangular bolt pattern. And, I don't know, I, I kind of looked across it over to something metric, bolt the pilot diameter and you know, the bolt pattern, and it didn't really. And the overdrive unit, I'm told, is equally vintage, so who knows? You know, they probably didn't make a ton of them. Uh, so this is what the dry shaft looked like. This is the half that I cut off of it, essentially. It's not quite cut in half, but it it's dramatically shorter to make up for the length. Um, this needed to be 31 and 5 eighths from that flange there that I made to the Guibo joint. Uh, this, that's what this was. And um, that's, the, that's the dimension that they needed to satisfy what the car is now. And so we'll take a look at this real quick. So this is the end, obviously, that I'm not using. This end was banged up pretty bad. The other end was the same construction, but in good shape. Um, usually, these Guibo joint style tri-flange, whatever you want to call it, they have a nose bushing inside of there. It looks kind of like that. And when I balance them, they go on a pin that looks like that, and it's taped on. And, you know, you don't do it that way. This one here is just a big hollow bronze cavity. It looks just like that, but it's not all banged up. And I'm told that the nose bushing is, is part of the, trans, the rear axle shaft that's still on the car. So I had to make up for that difference somehow. And that's what I did. I made a detail that looks like that and I wrapped some tape around it. And that's what you're seeing spinning in there. And the tape is a little bit of a cushion. That's, that's kind of the way this operates here. That's a steel outer jacket with a plastic inner liner and that's got a layer of rubber in between it gives it some flexibility and the, it needs to have that here too because the, the balancer has to be able to operate so I got that fought to a standstill so it wasn't rattly and I got the thing tuned up now so that's cranking that's about 2,000 what 2,500 so we're going to say that this is a win for the 37 Bugatti it's a, got a wicked just a little bit of flutter right there and I did I've been messing around with this this morning and I had it going like faster than this and I, I spun the tape all into a big gob so that's contributing to that but we're happy with the uh, tune-up on it it's, it's gonna run good for the guy now we're gonna look at some of the other peculiar features here this thing is deceptively heavy for what it is so take a close look right there. See that line? It's two layers. This is a tube and a tube, and this, this thing's heavy. I mean, that's probably, I don't know, I bet that's close to 10 pounds, just that little piece. And uh, this is a piece of the tube right here, and they did this back then, and they must have had some idea how that worked. You know, they had a better idea back in the time. We don't do it that way now, but that's the way this is. That's that same, obviously the same. You can see I had to straighten it a couple of spots, get it get it to run right. This thing had a big banana hook in it, the whole thing. Of course, the ends are all banged up, so it was hard to tell exactly. But um, So I did straighten it. That's a uh, shorty, inch and three-eighths, 16 spline. Yapco slip yoke that I had for it's like a for a PTO 1701 stub shaft with um, a, a lot of rework to it to get to fit this tubing uh, it's, it, that's made for two inch 
was made for two inch tube and I reworked that substantially to get it to fit in there. This shows some of the, uh, the this is a PTI blank flange that I made over and I, you know, I put those pockets in there and there's the bolt circle that they needed. And the pilots, the pilots inside of here, obviously. Um, yeah, the tube and a tube thing, not surprisingly, it reacted differently at every step of the way. It, 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 it's really heavy, so it, it took more balance to get it heavy, I mean, to get it balanced. And uh, it did weird things when I welded on it. <laughs> and it also straightened differently. So there was, there was, the only surprise about this is that it wasn't a surprise. I, I figured it was gonna be weird as soon as I saw it was two layers, but uh, yeah. It's the first time I've seen that, and I think this is the first Bugatti shaft that I've ever tackled. So, a win and a win. So, we're going to uh, pass this back to my customer. And there is, there will be a uh, separate video of making the flange and reworking the stub shaft and putting this all together, too. So, uh, we're going to get this back to Coastal, and they can get the Bugatti going.